doing a different kind of video. Let's do it. Let's go. Hello and welcome. My name is Carmen. This is the cloth diaper review for the time being. I changed the name. Still kind of working on that. Today is an exciting day. I say the word exciting a lot, but I guess everything, everything to me is exciting. Like life is exciting. Anyway, I digress. Today we are talking about something that's not cloth diapering. This is my first video that has nothing to do with cloth diapering and I'm I'm looking forward to it. I've been thinking about doing this video for so long that it seems weird that I didn't do it before because I was interested in doing it. So let's uh, let's get into it. Today we are talking about switching to natural bar shampoo because if you've done it, you know it can be tricky. So two things before we get into how I transition to using natural bar shampoo. Number one, not all bar shampoos are created equal. Bar shampoos can still have um, the same kind of chemical agents that are in, you know, standard liquid shampoos. Uh, main thing is going to be something that is like a surfactant, something that helps to lather and kind of help and strip things out. Uh, that is not the case with the shampoo bars that I use. When I first started to switch to using a bar shampoo, it was to try to cut down on packaging. So I did use one from Royalty Soaps for a long time and really liked it and then decided that I wanted to go the more natural route. I really wanted to cut out a lot of the excess chemicals that are in shampoo and conditioner. So I was using the shampoo and the conditioner bar from their lovely products. If you are looking to just make a switch to something a little bit more sustainable that has less packaging, but I made the switch and I switched to something that is like a truly saponified fat shampoo bar. The second thing is that I have hard water. If you have soft water, you are going to have a much, much easier time switching to natural shampoo bars. Hard water, so it's kind of weird. It's opposite of with, <laughs> with cloth diapering. So when you cloth diaper, you use generally a lot less detergent with soft water because it's hard to get it to rinse out. And then with hard water you use more detergent because it just acts differently um, within the water. It's opposite when you are using sh a natural shampoo bar. You are going to have a harder time switching if you have hard water because it does not want to rinse out and that has to do with the saponified fats and the uh, hard water deposit, the hard mineral deposits in hard water. Can it be done? Yes, because I have 250. I have 250 for um, my water hardness and I was able to make the change without getting water softener. So with those out of the way, let's get into it. So first things first, what am I using now? So as I mentioned, I was using the shampoo and conditioner bar from Royalty Soaps and then decided to make the change to something that was like genuinely a natural shampoo bar. So what I'm using is actually from a company called Nectar of the Woods, and that is a company in Minnesota. It's somewhat local to me. I don't live super close to this, like where um, this company is from in Minnesota. However, it's local enough to me that I really like supporting this company on top of I've had really good luck with um, all of their shampoo. I've ordered, <clears throat> I've used three different of the shampoo bars, and I think that I've had four or five of like the body, like body soap bars, and I've been very happy with it. So the company is again, Nectar of the Woods. I'll, I'll link you buy it through Facebook Marketplace. Um, and yeah, I've been, been really happy with it. So the one that I'm currently using right now is the Jasmine Rice Shampoo Bar. This is uh, a newer one. I've used it a couple times. So this is the size that you are getting. And this time it came in a little package that just said what kind it was. I feel like her packaging has changed a couple times and I feel, I feel like that's normal. With companies, you kind of figure out how you like to use it. And then each of them do come with a little slip that is, um, what's in there. So this one is the Jasmine Rice shampoo and it has a 10% super fat. So the higher percentage of super fat, think about it as the more conditioning it's going to be. So I started with something that was much lower and then have decided that I actually do better with a higher super fat. 
as my hair is adjusted to using this. <clears throat> and then what's in this is olive oil, coconut oil, castor oil, shea butter, avocado oil, filtered water infused with jasmine rice, and she does all of like her um, oil infusions and water infusions herself. Lye, that's essential to natural bar shampoo. Uh, jasmine essential oil, orange essential oil, and ground rice that goes in this. But with the ground rice, I'm assuming that it's maybe like a thickener because there is no um, like abrasive property, I would say, on this one. And the scent, the scent is very good. Just like, uh, like it says, a very uh, light jasmine with a little bit of an orange undertone. I've been very happy with this company. I haven't tried any other ones, but I have tried three different ones from this company and I keep going back because I've been happy with it. And the one adjustment that I have used with it is finding what percentage of that leftover um, fat that I need to make this work you know, to, to have the conditioning agent in it. So that's what I use. Let's go and do how I actually switched. Ching to natural shampoo bars. Ooh, what a time, what a time. I was not prepared. So the first time that I tried to do this, I tried to switch to using Castile soap. And it was, I lasted about three shampoos because it immediately was not good. And what I mean by not good is that you go through a purge of sort. Your hair goes through a purge of sort. So the way that modern shampoo and conditioners work is essentially by stripping and coating, stripping and coating, stripping and coating. Uh, it's just the way that it works. The reason that your hair feels so soft is because it's been coated by some sort of other agent because everything's been stripped out natural, uh, excuse me, standard shampoo and conditioners don't actually work the way that you think that they might. And this is coming from someone like with, with a hair background, with a, with a professional, professionally trained and worked for many, many years as a hairdresser. You're essentially just putting back on what you stripped out. That's just the nature of the way that it works. That is you have potentially many, many years, depending on the length of your hair, of built up product. And your hair goes through a purge that I've seen called the waxies, and that's what I call it because that's the best way to describe it. Your, oh, it's bad. Your hair looks not clean not clean and it might not happen the very first time that you wash your hair but the second time it's rough it ooh, just wear your hair up because it does not look good your hair does not look good and it feels waxy because it's trying to pull off all of this um a all these agents that have been weighing your hair down and and making it feel nice when really it's kind of covering up the more abrasive properties of the shampoo so that is the one thing that is so tricky about switching and once you can get through it it's like smooth sailing as long as you don't go back to using some sort of product that's going to just continue and put that um, junk back into your hair but this is probably what keeps people from wanting to use natural shampoo because it really stinks to get through. Your hair does not look good. This is how I dealt with it. So I know that I've seen lots of things like using apple cider vinegar rinses, using baking soda cleanses. I've even seen people like putting hot applesauce, not like burning hot, but like warmed up applesauce to help combat this. I did try the apple cider vinegar when I was trying to use the Castile soap and it just like was not working. I felt like it was making it worse and it was making my hair incredibly dry. And I knew better because it's messing, you know, with the pH of your hair when you're doing it. So what I ended up doing, I'm pretty sure I saw it on Reddit maybe, like when I was like looking how to do this, because I, I, I felt very strongly about switching, like fully switching. And that's when I ran into the information about hard water. So I had two options. I could get a water softener, which now in hindsight would have been really nice um, just to have now, even with um, 
just standard showering like your skin does really dry out when you're using uh, or when you're using water that has hard hard mineral in it so in hindsight that would have been nice um, but I really didn't want to spend like forty dollars I'm sure you can get them for less but what the ones that I was looking at were like forty dollars and I just really didn't want to spend that kind of money on it to be honest with you so I came across a post that mentioned using like a natural bristle brush and brushing and brushing and brushing and I was already using I have a boar hair bristle brush it's from like just nature grocery it's like not anything fancy other than it's a natural bristle brush with like a wood handle on it uh, I'm sure you can get them Whole food your local natural store Amazon you know wherever you want to get it so I ended up and this was like a couple washes in and my hair like I couldn't pull, pull my hand through my hair basically so I ended up going ahead and sectioning off my hair and like trying to like separate it blah 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 blah, blah. and I pull it up and then I brushed and brushed and brushed and brushed and brushed and brushed and brushed section by section moving up my head until I could really like it I, you could tell that it was coming off like you could physically see like white matter coming off like the brush got really disgusting and I had to clean it afterwards and I just kept doing that so every time I would go to shampoo my hair I would make sure that I would brush and brush and brush and brush on dry hair not wet hair don't brush your hair when it's wet um, and I would sit there and do the same thing and it sounds like a lot of work but it was like kind of calming it really reminded me of like when I was a kid when my mom would brush my hair so that really helped getting the waxy part out the other part that I found out about using hard water was as I mentioned before that it's really hard to get the shampoo out of your hair once it's in there so a couple tips same thing when you when I shampoo my hair I have my hair tie in there and I do shampoo in like about three sections so I'll get everything wet and then I'll go through and section up my you know from the crown down let's say and that's what I will first get the shampoo at so when you're using pretty much any shampoo in my opinion this is what's dirty up here this probably isn't unless you've done something in which it is actually very heavily soiled so I really only shampoo on my scalp and let the water do its job and it works um, fine for my hair type with your particular hair type maybe you need to shampoo all the way through with mine I don't have to also I do not use like this bar does not go on my head you don't want to think about it like that so I put it in my hand like this and it does you have to think about this it doesn't lather the same way as like commercial shampoos it's a little bit different you can get some lather on it especially if you like once you get it on your scalp and you go in and I'll like quick put my head under the water just to get a little bit more water and then you can get it through there um, but as I mentioned I don't put this like here I get it through here really get it going and then I go underneath or on top wherever I'm working and start working it through um, like that so don't put this part the, the actual bar on your hair and I found that that really helps me control the amount that's actually going on my hair so that it's not so hard to get out but then the key point is getting it out of your hair it should take you far longer to rinse natural bar shampoo than it does for you to actually shampoo your hair you rinse and you rinse and you rinse and once you think you've done rinsing you will rinse again and the same thing I rinse in sections as I go up and then um, just working through and just kind of using my own um, hands through there I do have like a, a wide tooth comb that sometimes I bring in there because my hair gets really tangly like my hair in general is just kind of a tangly kind of hair I need a haircut but I'm emotionally spiritually physically attached to my hair at this point and I will not cut it even though I could probably I know that I could stand to lose a trip but anyway and I'll go through and the same thing very gently you know if I do run into a snag of some sort working from the bottom and working the way up to get the, the um, 
and he snarls out and then you rinse and you rinse and you rinse and you rinse and then it's out and do I knew the condition no I don't I would love to look into what kind of options there would be for like a natural conditioner bar but what I do use I feel like it's a little dry because it does get dry especially in the winter I end up using Kind of whatever I have. So right now I have a calendula cell that I made. It's a little bit heavy. It's I did not make it for that. Um, so I put like very very sparingly sparingly and might just put it on the ends if I feel like that or coconut oil, sweet almond oil. Depending on your hair type, again you may need a heavier, more hydrating oil, or you might need something that is lighter. Um, like I need to use on my hair, or else my hair will get way down and it will get very greasy looking really really quickly so I have to be careful with that. Have noticed with using natural bar shampoo now is that I do need to wash my hair more often. Um, I would wash my hair like maybe once a week and no it's two to three times a week you can just I mean it just gets oily and there's always going to be an adjustment period with with that and everybody's going to be different. I also don't use any sort of like dry shampoo type thing, be that something that you've made or some sort of commercial thing. I don't use that. I probably could go longer, but I like having my hair. I like how my hair looks when it's clean. Like I washed it um, last night and it's nice and soft and it smells good. I really do like that shampoo right now way that it smells in my hair and my husband likes it so that's also always a nice bonus. Have I noticed any major changes with my hair after switching? Yeah. <laughs> yes definitely. Um, I used to have really really pin straight hair and you might you could probably look at my hair and you're like you do have straight hair. Um, yes and no. Like my hair had absolutely no like even hint of anything. Um, this is the end of the day, but when I woke up, it was a, like slightly more wavy and some days it, it is more um, than others, but it was like, like pin straight. I, I never had to flat iron or anything like that. And I don't do that to my hair anymore. Um, but I have noticed that my hair does have a different, um, slightly trying to be a wave pattern. It's definitely not wavy, but it's no longer perfectly straight like it used to be. And that comes from, I think product weighing it down. I know that having a baby can really change your hair, but the fact that it's all through my hair, like through my hair shaft, and it's not just where, um, you know, I've never colored, I, I have colored my hair, but I do have a large portion of my hair now that has never been colored, um, that it's not just there, it's kind of throughout there. And that's the biggest um, known as the biggest change that I've noticed along with my hair just feeling lighter in general. Um, it's definitely more snarly than it used to be and that could just be that my hair is right now longer than it's ever been for me I think. I don't know maybe when I was a little bit younger a little bit younger a lot younger maybe it was longer then but I feel like we're getting to the point that this is the longest that I've ever had it. I would like it to continue to grow. So if you have any tips about how I can make it grow even longer, that's kind of why I got the Jasmine Rice one because I know that Jasmine Rice can be very good for um, growing your hair long, but you do need to be careful about it because it can over uh, put too much protein in your hair and then your hair break off and snap and things like that. And I don't want that to happen. I want it to be nice and long. So if you have anything about growing nice long hair, let me know. Other than like, don't color it, I stopped coloring it well over a year ago. I don't use hot tools on it, hardly ever. Maybe once a month, because I'm gonna film a video, I'll do it. Um, what else? I, I do sleep with it wet sometimes, that's pretty bad. Um, but I do um, braid my hair before I go to bed in a loose braid. Um, other than that, what else could I do to make it grow nice and long? Obviously taking vitamins, but I don't, I don't do that. I just eat food and hope that I get it. <laughs> so that is, that's kind of all over the place. Um, different kind of video to film, you know, usually when I'm filming a cloth diaper video, 
I ha kind of have a way in which I, f I film and there's a natural progression. So I'm kind of figuring out how to talk about different things because I want to talk about that. So if you're watching this video and you're like, why are you not talking about cloth diapers? Because I want to talk about stuff other than cloth diapers. Because I have interests. I have interests beyond cloth diapering. And one of them is using natural bar shampoo. So if you have any questions for me, drop it down below. If you need more clarification about what the heck you are talking about, let me know tips, tricks, all that fun stuff. This has been fun. This has been cool to talk about something other than cloth diapers. As much as I love talking about cloth diapers, it was cool to talk about something that I also feel passionate about. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you like cloth diapering videos and what else I might be talking about in the future, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm getting tongue-tied. It's late. Let's go to bed. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Bye.